Hey guys, welcome back to Machine Gun Mike. Today we're going to be taking a look at all of these submachine guns right here. And this is kind of a good sampling of some various simple submachine guns in World War II from various countries. So, and with the MP40, I kind of hate to call it simple. It's definitely the most complicated one in the group. But compared to like the earlier MP38 where it had a milled receiver, it is a little bit simpler. So this one, it is essentially a tube, a fancy tube at that with a telescoping firing pin, really, really nice, smooth operating mechanism. The Sten, it literally is a pipe with just a solid bolt firing pin milled into the front of it. Grease gun, that is basically two sheet metal receiver halves welded together, solid bolt, you cock it with your finger. And then the Russian PPSH-41, it is a rolled receiver that is then welded down the middle of the bottom. So anyways, let's go ahead and disassemble each one of these guns and then do some shooting. First up, let's take a look at the Russian PPSH-41. So to break down the receiver, you push the back of the receiver and then it lifts up and then really, that's it. You can just pull your bolt out and here's the recoil spring right there. And if I have to say a bad or a weak link on the PPSH-41, definitely the recoil spring. You definitely do need to replace these and they can really, it's kind of hard to describe. It's just not the best recoil spring. I'll just kind of leave it at that. But besides that, the trigger mechanism is very simple. You can see that right inside there. And this gun is semi-auto and full auto. So put it back together. Recoil spring goes back in the bolt. And that's it. So that's the PPSH-41. Next up, let's look at the MP40 submachine gun. Beautiful submachine gun. I really do like these things and very smooth shooting submachine guns. So to break it down, there's actually a knob right here. You pull that knob, you rotate it 90 degrees. And when you do that, you can pull the trigger, you rotate the receiver, and it comes right out. Very simple. And here is the bolt itself, as well as the telescoping firing pin. And these are prone to breaking. Obviously, you can tell that is something that could definitely happen. So I'll put it back together. One thing, you do have to make sure this part's centered. There we go. Rotate that back. All right, there it is put back together. So next up, let's do, let's do the Sten. The grease gun will take me a while to do and I'll explain to you why. So here's the Sten, definitely the crudest out of all of the machine guns we're looking at today. It really is essentially a pipe and the magazine well does go to the side like that. You can rotate it to the bottom, but you can't shoot it like this. This is purely for storage. But that other German submachine gun I was mentioning earlier that's super simple, it actually does look like that. So anyways, break it down. There's this button right here, you push that. Kind of make these two hands. Sometimes it's trickier doing this on camera, I'm trying to make sure you, sure, sure you guys see everything. So anyways, once you remove the stock, you can then push this, you rotate it, that cap comes out. Pull the trigger, you can remove your charging handle. Come on, there we go. There's your bolt, right there. Mine's actually a little dirty, but I will clean it after we do more shooting today. But yeah, just a solid piece of steel with a machine firing pin in the front. So now I'll put this back together. Put the 
charging handle back in. And there's these tabs right here that have to line up with these notches on the inside of the receiver. So you push them in there and then you rotate, locks it in place. And the stock, and go right back on. All right, so that's it for the stent. So next up, we have the grease gun, the M3A1. And so my M3A1 does take a little bit longer to break down, and I will explain that once I get to it. So first, let's remove the stock. Mine's a little snug. And that also doubles as the barrel wrench. super easy to remove. So now, on a normal M3A1, I would be able to lift the dust cover, pull the trigger, and the bolt would come right out the front. But I'm using a different style rear guide rod plate, and I'll show you why, or actually here, I'll just explain why. The later M3A1, the guide rod plate, you can actually see the indentation of it here in the receiver, and there's actually even a tiny crack on the receiver. Well, the reason they made it smaller, even though it does cause a lot more wear and stress at the end of the receiver, was because then it could go over the ejector. What a lot of people like me do is they replace it with the earlier M3 guide rod plate and it's actually this full circle right here. The problem with that is that you can't get it over the ejector. So to do that you have to do two more steps. This trigger guard right here you have to remove that. So you just pull it, you just pry it off this is funny when you start prying parts off of guns. So there's that. Then this whole piece comes right off. There's the ejector that was blocking it. So now that that's off, the sling is just in the way. Oh, oh, there you go. So now it can come right out. So if you look at this, you can see, granted, it's not the full circle, it's still flat a little bit on the tops, but it's a lot larger than the later M3A1, which is this gun, where it's just a little rectangle. But you swap this in, and it reduces the stress at the rear of the receiver significantly. So that's why I did that. So now to put it back together. this, put that right back on like so, hook that in there, and this you just push down, pops right in. Get your barrel, thread that on there, make it good and snug. So still really simple, but can you imagine if you didn't even have to do that other part? You just pop the barrel off and everything falls out really easy. Not that really any of these guns here is complicated, but then the stock, you feed it back into these two holes. There you go. So let's go ahead and get the mags loaded up for all of these and do some shooting. All right guys, first up, we're gonna shoot the Sten gun.
You know, this gun, for as crude and simple as it is, it's actually an extremely pleasant shooting gun. Very smooth operating mechanism, no recoil. Of course, it's nine millimeter and it's a little heavy for nine millimeter, so that's probably part of it. But really, really nice shooting machine gun. And yeah, I mean, as long as you hold it in the right place, I've heard that if you hold on the magazine, it can end up causing it to misfeed. So I've always held it here. Whether that's right or wrong, I'm totally not 100% sure, but that's just where I've always held it. Obviously, you wanna make sure you don't get your fingers over there. That could hurt. But yeah, besides that, awesome, awesome submachine gun. Next up, we got the M3A1 grease gun. Little bit more recoil with this one a little chuggy it is 45 acp but really again because that bolt rides on those guide rods man it is a super smooth machine gun and so far so far it has been 100 reliable not a single failure with this thing so got to be impressed with it i mean just look at it this thing has put so many rounds down range and it's still chugging along so next up we've got the russian ppsh 41 chambered in the 7.62 takarev round very high rate of fire, especially compared to that grease gun. brass just raining all around me all right we're clear so real high rate of fire with that being said though the recoil really isn't that bad and I can't really explain why that is but I assume it has something to do you know just the caliber itself it's not a very large caliber but yeah you pull this thing in and I'm sure you can see the muzzle end it's not rising a lot and I mean it's shooting a thousand rpms 900 rpms still very pleasant to shoot this barrel shroud it gets a little toasty even after just that. But yeah, again, another one of those guns were super reliable, even though it's super simple, and it has a lot of wear and tear on it as well. So anyways, the Russians knew what they were doing. So next up is my personal favorite, the German MP40 submachine gun. It's so smooth shooting, <laughs> such a good gun. And you know, that's really why it's my personal favorite. It is just an absolute pleasure to shoot this thing. There you have it guys, a good little sampling of some World War II submachine guns. You know, and I'm sure that you notice when you shoot them, very different experiences with all of them. You know, you have things like the MP40 with the telescoping firing pin and that whole recoil system, super smooth. Then you have something like the Sten, where the, <laughs> the mechanics of it are actually quite a bit simpler, but it feels just as cushioned and almost as smooth as the MP40. The grease gun, very unique feel, kind of hard to describe, but it's, it's equally smooth, a little bit chuggy, but overall a really nice gun. And then the PPSH-41, even though it's got this real high rate of fire, it's still smooth also. So, I mean, I guess, I guess in conclusion, they're all smooth. You know, that's what I'm saying. And probably because, I mean, really, they're all just a bunch of pistol calibers. So it's not like they're going to have a ton of recoil anyways. But it's still pretty interesting that they're all kind of like that while still being all very different and using all different calibers. Well, three different calibers. These two share calibers. So, you know, it's just kind of interesting to see all those differences. Also, the differences in how they're manufactured and things like that. You know, and this is definitely just a sampling. There were a ton of other World War II submachine guns. Japan had some, of course. I don't have any of those to show you. The Thompson submachine gun is definitely more known than the grease gun for America, but the grease gun 
you know, considering what it is, I mean, just, just look at it, you know, and it works. It's kind of like looking at this. It's like, I mean, this, this looks like something that came out of a hardware store and you just cobbled it together and it works really well. You know, this, uh, a little bit more complicated, this certainly more complicated, but anyways, you know, just overall a good sampling of some relatively simple submachine guns from World War II in various countries. So anyways, I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, please definitely consider subscribing to the channel. Check out all my links down below to help support the page on Patreon, through merchandise. You can check me out on Facebook, Instagram. I have all of that stuff down in the links below. And I guess that's really all that I have for you. So as always, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all here next time. simple. Um, the MP40 is still actually a really nicely made and not super simple submachine gun, but it's in this grouping um, because the MP... Good lord. Hey guys, welcome back to Machine Gun Mike. 